Sultans the Truth, Ruby Walsh. Two, Siege Master, Davy Russell. Number three is Oscar Bay, Seamus Durak. Four, Shining Gale, No Feely. Take out five. Six is Cheating Chance, Mark Grant. Number seven, Killy Glenn is the mount of Dennis O'Regan. Eight, Messini's Maguire is Richard Johnson. Nine, Orjorn, uh, Jamie Moore. Ten, uh, Cockhardy is Tom O'Brien. And take out 11. So a total of nine runners for this mild made novices chase. Well, there is Ruby Walsh on board. Very set look on his face. On board, here comes the truth in the purple colours of Harry Finlay. And Harry is wearing a purple tie and shirt and almost a purple suit. Uh, God, he's quite free going down to the start, Harry. Yeah, he's very he, he, he's, he's that type of horse, Claire. Right from the day we bought him, he had serious injury when he buggered off down Ditchy High Street uh, as a, as a three-year-old, and we didn't think we'd ever see him jumping fences or hurdles at one stage. But uh, I watched him schooling last week, and he, he, literally in the air, he was actually going higher like a like a jump jet. I've never seen a horse like him, and uh, he hasn't taken the, the, the preliminaries well. The uh, the atmosphere here is fantastic today yeah. around the paddock. Aintree's unique for that, and he, he, hasn't, he hasn't taken it too well. But uh, I won't be backing him. Uh, but I wouldn't. It wouldn't write him off completely. It'd always, I'd always expect him to be a bit sweaty and a bit buzzy anyway. But he has taken it particularly badly, and I won't be backing him. No. Well, Harry, you've had good days in your life, punting and good days with your horses. You've had bad days as well. And actually, yesterday must have made you feel awful after Denman had that fall. Well, it did for for a moment, Claire. You know, we had a few quid on, and I've never been to any race course anywhere where so many people wanted one horse to win. And when he come down, coming down the steps, obviously saw the screens go up. When I got down to the screens, I saw the blood, and effectively that was a good thing because that was a reason for the screens. And to be honest, the one advice, knowing that Denman's well now, knowing if in fact, he was back well last night. The, the thing for me was Paul Nichols, his authority. He knew what was going on, even when all the blood was flying around. Him and Buffy knew. Both of them were so cool about it. Team ditch it to me. Ruby was the first over there to see Denman. And knowing Paul Nichols was so sure that Denman was all right, literally as it was happening. And that confidence from, from him and from Dan Skelt and all of them were, you know, for me, that was the over on him. Knowing that Denman's well now, and obviously the exotic dancer uh, lost his life, which was a terrible thing independently. but. To me, Team Ditchy and Buffy the Vet, they, they were brilliant down there behind the screens and afterwards, and, and, and in fact, Aintree Racecourse. And, yeah. you know, knowing that he's well, that, 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 that's what will stick with my mind. I tell you, lots of good wishes to you from all the BBC viewers. Yeah. We really hope to see Denman I mean, back he, The amazing. support he gets yeah. is, is amazing, and to be a part of it is just a dream. A dream. Harry, we're gonna, I'm not even going to ask you about Big Fella Thanks today. because First wanna... two-year-old winner already, Chiquita Banana, <laughs> named after our dog, one at Bath, and we'll win at Muscle, winner 255 listen, as well. Listen, he rev, rev him up, he's like a little machine, <laughs> but we'll ask him about Big Fella Thanks, who's also named after Dog, his best dog of all uh, tomorrow. But here comes the truth. He told us the truth. John Parrott and Gary Wiltshire, his money's not on today. He thinks the horse is a bit fizzed up in the preliminaries. Yes, and that's reflected in the market, Claire, because he's a very uneasy favourite this here comes the truth. Out to three to one. It's seven to two, Mercedes Maguire. Continued money for Shining Gale, four to one shot. Eleven to two, Siege Master from an opening eight. It's seven to one, Killy Glenn. Sixteen to one, Orjun. Twenty-five to one, Oscar Bay. Cheating chance of 28 to 1 shot, 40 to 1 cock hardy, but no money at all for Harry's horse, but there is a monumental gamble, Gary. Yes, Siege Master John, 14 to 1 this morning with Ad Books. It's now down to 5, 5 and a half. But all the bookies are tagging me and saying, we'll clear leave Harry alone. They want Harry in the ring to back his horse. There's no money for it. It's gone from 2 to 1 to 3 to 1. It's drifting. Harry, come round here and have a bet on it. And Shining Gale as well, very popular. We put that up at the top of the programme as a not horse, John. 7 to 1 it was early. You'll be lucky to get 5 to 1 now, Shining Gale. Dad are two money horses. Siege Master, Shining Gale. But the favourite is very weak. Well, here's the horse that is the subject of all that money, number two, Siege Master from Desi Hughes' stable in Ireland. Was fancied to run well last time, Richard, in the Sun Elias chase at the Cheltenham Festival. Fell five from home. We mentioned earlier, Risha, yes, he fell in the RSA. Um, he'd won at Narvan, but he'd also run a very good, put in a very good run to Casey Jones. He'd finished third at, at Leopardstown as well, and, uh, you know, they're fancying him today. I'm just going to show you something, guys. That is Barry Geraghty, former winner of the Grand National Montes Pass. He rides finger on the pulse. He's very well like fancied baby. for the top of him, and he's half asleep. He's sleeping like a baby. Did you, Richard? Did you manage to fall asleep during the middle of a day's race? Um, yes, there were probably times when we when we did sort of uh, take the chance for 40 winks, but. Uh, yeah, very I can't believe someone's very not very going to play a prank probably, on him. Probably be like, yes, they'll be sticking things on him. Do, 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 do you know what? Minute. They might just leave him asleep. He rides Pity Robin. He's got an outside chance of actually winning the John Smith's Melling Chase at 10 past three, so he'll be woken up. Well, hopefully he'll have set his alarm before then, because otherwise the other jocks will just let him fall asleep. Robbie oh, Power there, there on the right. There he is. <laughs> Wake up, Barry. Good to see you again. 
Chuck Thornton there in the foreground and Robbie Parrott was in between them. He rides Silver Birch trying to go for a, a second Grand National win. Some good looking horses in this. I tell you the horse that was absolutely enormous. Killy Glenn of Howard Johnson's Dennis O'Regan rides. Massive horse. Mussini's yes, um, Maguire I love. I've always loved the horse. So consistent. Cracking little horse owned by Alan Peterson, a great sport, sportsman. Alan loves his rugby as, as well, and uh, he's had a lot of fun with this horse, hasn't he? Winning at the festival, finishing third last time to Cooldown. Very unlucky at Sundown. Uh, he might get his revenge today on, on Here Comes the Truth. He's just got to jump. He's got to jump and jump from fence to fence because he can make lots of mistakes. It's just a little horse. Uh, he, did, he looked a little bit light to me today, Richard, I, what I thought. Let's just take another look at the uh, at the head of the market because we know there's no money for Here Comes the Truth. Harry's told us he's not backing him today. He doesn't want to put off other people, but three to one you can now get. You know, Harry might end up being tempted by that. They're off and running, Jim. That's it, they're off. They set off on this three-mile, one furlong journey. And in the centre, Here Comes the Truth as uh, the early leader. Leads over the first, or jump it safely. From on the far side, Killy Glenn, and on the near side, in the cheek pieces, Shining Gale. In behind them, Massini's Maguire is just shading Orjean as they head over the second, which is an open ditch. And a long way back in the field is Cock Hardy and company with Cheating Chance. And on the near side, Oscar Bay with those white armlets is about third last. Heading up now towards the third, and here comes the truth. Out in front for Ruby Walsh, leads by two to three lengths. To Killy Glen on the far side, the orange sleeves. Then on the near side is Shining Gale as they clear that one. Messini's Maguire just got in a fraction close to that. Orjorn is first, is uh, next, followed on the far side by Siege Master. Well back then is Cheating Chance, followed by Cock Hardy, and out wider is Oscar Bay. And the favourite, uh, here comes the truth. Well, as expected, out in front and making it. Yeah, he's, he enjoys himself out in front of this horse. It's almost like he, he only goes as fast as the horses behind him push him along. And he's a very, very good jumper this year, comes the truth. And, you know, he's a sensible horse when he's out there in front. Well, he's a sensible horse sometimes. Uh, Cheltenham possibly not so sensible when he ducked out earlier in the season. He's won five races, though. And here he comes to the fourth. He is pricked as he heads over that one. From on the far side, Shining Gale in the red jacket. And just behind them as they sort themselves out on the near side. Going up in the centre, Messini's Maguire now up into about third or fourth. But coming now towards the fifth. And a leading over it, here comes the truth. From Shining Gale and then on the near side, the orange sleeves of Killy Glen. Messini's Maguire is next from Orjean as they come to the second open ditch. Out wider on the track is Oscar Bay. And a mistake there. A mistake there by uh, here comes the truth. He uh, took off a little bit, took off a little bit too early there, and he paid the price. He's still on his feet though as they come to the seventh, and that was a much more professional leap. He then jumped up there, upside shining girl on the far side, and then on the near side is Achille Glenn. So as they leave the back now, and this one mistake so far, but this just might get him concentrating. It certainly seems to have worked. You can see everybody else is almost pulling back to say, right, okay, we need a leader, and he's now gone back into the lead. Coming to the cross fence, number eight. And here comes the truth. A much more proficient jump at that. From Messini's Maguire, he gets closer on the outside. Then in third is Killy Glenn. Those orange sleeves spotted cap the far side. Then Shining Gale. Further back in the field then is Siege Master, who's enjoying a good run on the inside of Orjean. And wider out then is Cheating Chance. As they head now towards the ninth, here comes the truth. He steadies and he jumps that perfectly. Cockhardy is well back in the field, second last, and Oscar Bay is at the tail of the field. Coming to the third open ditch, number 10, and it's here comes the truth with the noseband striding out. He judged that to perfection. Landed over it in front there of Killy Glenn. Messini's Maguire hit it very hard and has dropped back. He really felt that, and he's dropped back to about fifth on the outside as they make their way now towards fence number 11 it'll be the last next time round and still out in front here comes the truth he comes towards it now he has a good look and he's jumping well mistake there by shining gale back in the field and Messini's Maguire not jumping well at all and Richard Johnson trying to stoke him up for Messini's and trying to get him back into it he doesn't look happy does he Richard Johnson he, the horse is really doing what he wants him to do the horse that's had the sweetest passage of all here is Siege Master. Hasn't left the inside. Davy Russell looks to be very, very happy. Well, Siege Master, of course, who fell in the RSA chase at Cheltenham uh, far too early in the race. 
And he's really enjoying a good run here. The maroon colours with a white star back in the field as they head down the back now. And they've got a total of eight fences to be jumped. They come to the 12th. And leading over it, here comes the truth. Got over it in front of Massini's Maguire. He's determined to get back into the fight. Richard Johnson in behind them in third as Killy Glenn, followed by Shining Gale, who's out very wide. There further back in the field is Oscar Bay, followed by Cheating Chance as they come to the 13th. Uh, further back then, further back then is Siege Master, still enjoying that perfect run on the rails in centre field. Cockhardy is next, and Orjourn is back towards the rear. Coming to the fourth ditch, and leading over then on the inside is Killy Glenn. Here comes the truth. Just uh, losing a little bit of ground there on the outside. Now poking up in the centre is Cheating Chance as they come to the five out. And mighty left, Cheating Chance is gone. Cheating Chance is gone, a heavy fall there. The, the only one to go so far. As they head down the back now, they leave the back straight. And uh, on the inside is Killy Glenn from in second. Here comes the truth as they round that turn now. And the favourite back on, uh, back up there on terms. Yeah, you'd say here comes the truth. He's probably not gone as well as Ruby would like here. Coming to four out. And here comes the truth on the outside, but out jumped by Killy Glenn. He's going well. A faller back in the field is Oscar Bay. As they round the turn now. And the leader is still Killy Glenn by a length and a half, maybe two. Siege Master is looming up as the big danger. Then in third is Here Comes the Truth. He's starting to feel it. Followed then by Shining Gale and Cockhardy coming towards three out now. A mighty jump by the leader. It's uh, Killy Glenn out in front, but Siege Master is going there strongly. In third then is Shining Gale, a long gap. Mercedes Maguire who won't give in. They come to the last ditch at the second last now, and it's Killy Glenn who led over it. Spring Hill did that, landed over it, three lengths in front now. Siege Master in second, going to the inside is Shining Gale, but Killy Glenn, Dennis O'Regan, he's bounded four, five lengths in front now. He's only got one to jump, Killy Glenn with the commanding break on the field. He comes towards the last of the mild May novices chase. Killy Glenn, he takes off a spectacular leap at the last, and he's landed over it, seven, eight lengths clear and he's racing away to victory. Uh, it's Killy Glenn up towards the line who wins it well. Always travelling well for Dennis O'Regan and he wins it as he likes. From in second, Shining Girl in third, Siege Master couldn't go on. Then in fourth was Cockhardy and fifth is Masweeney's Maguire. Sixth is Orjean and uh, having been pulled up and will walk across the line is Here Comes the Truth. But number seven, Killy Glenn is the winner of the Mild May Novices Chase, trained by Howard Johnson, ridden by Dennis O'Regan. There he is at the last. He needed a big one and he gave it to, he gave his all. And it was a really good performance. Second and third there, in second place, uh, number four, Shining Girl, Noel Feely, and third, number two, Siege Master, Davy Russell. But the favourite, here comes the truth. You could see down the back, he was just struggling. He wasn't comfortable, was he, Ruby? You could see that from a long way out. But take nothing away from this horse, given a very aggressive ride by Dennis O'Regan, and he paid off. And it, you know, people will be happy now because it shows the Howard Johnson team's in better form. Tidal Bay coming up in the next race. Well, let's have a look at here comes the truth, Ruby Walsh. He put in a he put in one bad one on the first circuit. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but. Let's uh, focus on them as they come back after the second race. Well, this horse was a towering presence in the paddock beforehand. Absolutely giant he is. Dennis O'Regan, who rides Black Appalachi in the Grand National tomorrow. And he's uh, smiling, smiling all across his face. He is. This horse jumped not at all at Cheltenham, but he was really good here today. And jumping was the name of the game, Richard. It was, Clay. Just see him at the last and... Uh really striding away from it um, stayed on very very well but uh, really as you said jumping was the name of the game today shining girl in second run a very good race but did make a mistake at the last first time and, and, and missed a couple through the race siege master made mistakes as well messini's Maguire made so many mistakes I, I ran out of count for them and obviously here comes the truth while well, harry finley had been extremely honest with us beforehand said he wasn't backing the horse he thought he got far too fizzed up in the prim preliminaries and he made a howler at the sixth fence he did, Claire. He's come up from nowhere with Ruby. Uh, Dennis there just got a big smile all over his face. <laughs> He's such a nat natural rider. And here we have a look at uh, Here Comes the Truth. Just go into it. Comes up out of Ruby's hand a mile away. Absolute mile away. And he's done very well to uh, get away with that. 
he could have very easily hurt himself there as, as well. He seemed happy enough after that mistake there, but he's done made a mistake at the same fence, I, I believe, next time around and uh, was not himself at all today. And eventually Ruby Walsh pulled him up. But there is our winner, Killy Glenn, towering presence of a horse. There's Howard Johnson, his trainer, and they will be hoping that Tidal Bay can do exactly what Killy Glenn has done, which is put behind him jumping errors and be foot perfect here at Aintree. Well, let's find out what 